Hello and welcome to my latest installment of my tutorial series. I hope the mute is off my damn microphone this time. It's my second time doing this. But anyways, here we go. Um, these were just sketches that I had in my sketchbook uh, that I put into um, that I put into Photoshop and um, made this composition of it. I did most of the grayscale work already. So in this tutorial I'm just going to be um, coloring it. So here we go. Now for the color scheme I, for this piece I wanted it to be warmer. So let's, let's back that up. As you see I was I selected my color uh, blending mode there. And I colored it all red, just to make it really, just give it the impression of it being really hot. Like a hot summer day in the future. And this guy's trying to play basketball. Basketball won't let him play basketball because it can move around and stuff. Don't ask me why, why I paint what I paint. I just do so. And I apologize for my voice. I'm battling a cold. I don't know if any of you guys live in, um, Bay Area, but there was an earthquake last night and this morning to follow the earthquakes from the East Coast the um, yesterday, but anyways, yeah, shitty week. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time uh, hampering this guy's face. Uh, I'm using a lot of um, color well normal mode here but if you ever see me do this like what you just saw the little the little brush right there that's just my texture brush it's not that I do texture on um on the brush selector it's just a, a scratch it's just a scratch brush which means it's just a it's it's a capture of a scratch that I had in Photoshop and I put a scatter mode to it and you could easily look that up on Google on how to scatter your brushes, but it's a nice easy way to add a grimy texture to this basketball. It, it's inner city basketball of the future, so it, it should be used up quite a bit. Also decided to give him some more some more character to his face, so I, I made uh, his head like like a basketball too. It has those kind of stitch lines on it. And throughout this I'll be ripping it up and putting more emphasis on it because it is in the foreground. Getting rid of those hatch marks that I had from my earlier sketch. Now the colors that I chose um, around the bat, the basketball is going to be orange for sure. But the colors like here and um, his arms, even this guy's body here, because he's not really part of the foreground, I kind of sort of just let the um, the composition choose it. Which means uh, when I'm up there doing the uh, the whole temperature uh, temperature initial painting thing, I just let the colors kind of mix on their own. And then pick and choose which colors I want to keep. Here, uh, his limbs turned out to be uh, purple, and I thought that was a good compliment compliment to the orange of the um, of the basketball texture. So I kept it. And I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, detail on this guy's hand since it is pretty. Uh, um, important to the story of the illustration. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Just 
So in terms of light sources, I'm starting out with one light source, which is the sky, and it's coming from behind them. It's my main light source. It's the furthest one away, so it's always always the coolest. When you do your compositions, you always want to start off with one light source only, and then work from there. Later on, you'll see me um, put little jet thrusters down here. That'll be my secondary light source. It'll be more intense than this one because it's closer to us and warmer because it's coming from a jet. I mean, that's just the character of it. Then there'll be one faint light source down this way. That's kind of downplayed, but it's it's necessary for the to tie everything together, make everything seem a little bit more three-dimensional. And that's the only reason why people put light sources in their compositions to make things look three-dimensional. They strategically place them to to shine on different surfaces. I mean, that's why light exists in the physical world, if you think about it, it's to make things three-dimensional so you could see them as objects. So that's very much how you should treat light sources in your composition. That's how I do it, anyways. This is just me straightening up the backgrounds. You'll see me put more impressionistic touches in there. And I just got out of a huge traffic jam in the city. The stupid ass giants are playing again. I hope they lose. I hate you, giants. Anyways, doing this, doing the fist now. It's just a basic fist. Easy to render and manipulate. It's mostly in the shadow. So I don't want it to be as bright as the face to detract. I'm also going to take that space liquor out of there. It's a bit too uh, socially common. To, a bit too socially awkward for me. I'd like to think that in the future liquor stores are less abundant in these neighborhoods. I'm also going to do that stupid little alfalfa uh, sprout in his, uh, on top of his head. Make it look like a balloon umbilical cord. If you don't know what a balloon umbilical cord is, it's that the spot in the balloon where you tie it off so that air doesn't escape it. And here we are in my secondary light source. I'm using my overlay blending mode to create this. Which is very useful in light sources. Your overlay blending mode. Especially when you're trying to make a reflective surface. Like I'm doing with the basketball. Making it look more three-dimensional with these highlights. And of course the highlights on the bottom are always more intense than the highlights up front. And the highlights on his face is going to be the least intense because it's the furthest away from this light source here. And you'll see that in a moment. I do apologize if I'm going too fast. I'm kind of fast forwarding, skipping this, I'm trying to make my videos a little less long, long winded. See if I can get more hits this way. What am I up to? Nine minutes now? Jeez. Alright, cleaning up and rendering the hand there. Now normally I would take my, my bristle brush and put some texture into his body, but since he's in the background, not the foreground, I don't find it too big of a deal. I just need him formed. I don't need him detailed. I need this guy detailed, so I'll put some texture on him. I'm using that texture brush again. I'm also using multiply. I'm constantly switching between normal, multiply, and overlay. Multiply will help you push things back. Overlay will too, but not as specific as um. Multiply. Overlay is usually for highlights and things that you want saturated with your uh, brush color. That spalding I just imported straight from the internet. 
kind of warped it and transformed it and made it look more three dimensional and painted it into there. Yeah, I don't really like these links. Maybe I should have done a, a separate brush for this net, but hey, you live and learn. And I'm putting a little design on his shorts just so. Just to not make it look plain. My little improvised Nike spoosh there because in the future, for some reason, Nike still exists, even though it's a terrible damn company. I hope no Nike personnel are watching this because I do hope to work for you guys one day as a graphic designer. But yeah, that's the whole thing. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If not, I still appreciate your view, and thank you for stopping by.